further ado, I would like to go ahead and give Ms. Garcia the host capabilities. Okay, and let me, where did you guys go? Hold on. There we go. I am here and just my computer's being, once again, we had, here we are, okay. Optimize, there we go. Huh. Okay, there we are. Okay, we're getting there. I'm, I apologize for delay. My name is Sandra Garcia. I work for the San Jose Police Department. And this is just one of the many presentations that I do. Um, and I'm just moving all my stuff over. Um, and tonight we're going to talk about something called digital safety and it's changing daily. So every time, you know, I do this presentation, um, next thing you know it, there's something new, there's something different out there. And one of the things I do want to mention is the mental health of our children. And, and I will go into detail about that too, as well. Um, but how are, how are our children communicating? And so what's what's really new for us now is that we are our children are community uh, communicating phones, tablets, video game consoles, computers. Those are all of the ways that our children are, are and they're on it more. And 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 because they're not socially with their friends, sometimes we are allowing them to play more, you know, after school, you know, hey, oh yeah, go ahead, you can play with your friends because that's the only time they're able to actually socially interact with their children. So, you know, even though they are missing um, some of, you know, some of the interactions, I, I know some of my coworkers that I work with, I miss. I miss hanging out with some of my friends. I miss hanging out with some of my coworkers. Um, it, and it, it's, I, I've noticed uh, the way my behavior has changed and how, you know, my emotions have changed from not having that social interaction with my coworkers. So I'm gonna play a little video here. A consequence of the coronavirus pandemic is cyberbullying. Kids are spending more time online and in isolation. And now that school has started, experts say the online hate is going up. Eyewitness News reporter Jeremy Baker explores what parents can do. We've all heard the phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That statement couldn't be more wrong, especially for Maureen Molak, whose son David took his own life close to five years ago after enduring an unbearable amount of cyberbullying. We miss him tremendously, and there's just not a moment that goes by where we don't, we don't think about him. Our lives are forever changed. She more than understands how social isolation can make cyberbullying worse. Since COVID has hit, of course, the extra isolation and not being around people has also affected us. Smartphone apps like TikTok and Snapchat can open the door for cyber bullies. Those apps which then change the appearance of people or, or put up comments which are uh, very negative and bullying can be used negatively. According to Light, which monitors online harassment, there has been a 40% increase in toxicity on gaming sites since the pandemic began, a 70% increase in cyberbullying, and a 200% increase in traffic on hate sites. What can parents and their children do to combat the problem? Communicate. I hope one of the positives is that it opens up communication between kids and their parents or the adults around them. It's really important for, for them to know to talk to somebody if they see something online that's troubling to them. David's Legacy Foundation will be holding a screening about cyberbullying and resilience called the Upstanders on October 1st to mark the beginning of Anti-Bullying Month. To sign up, just head to... So I'm just going to end their website. We have the link on kens5.com. Jeremy Baker, Ken's 5 Eyewitness News. A consequence of the coronavirus. And so on top of that, we have, you know, the, I've, it, it's really scary how the mental health issue, and I will give resources uh, to various mental health uh, websites as well as uh, you can always contact 
Uh, Ms. Hammond, is, uh, I'm trying to remember the names of the counselors that you do have at the school. Yes, so our main counselor is Jenna Braga. Um, and then we, we have uh, multiple MFTs and um, social workers, et cetera. So one of the things that we're seeing in, in, in um, overall is the mental illness or actually the, the isolation is causing suicides throughout, you know, throughout the United States due to the shelter in place. So one of the things that uh, according to you know, the mental health advocates out there, uh, some of the things that we're recommending is number one, having dinner talk with the family, sitting at the table, talking to our children, and not only that, but for our children to actually, um, you know, deactivate their brains. Um, and, and when they're done with school to do something, walk a dog, read a book, do various things uh, with the parent if they can, or whoever takes care of them, you know, throw the football um, because they're missing that social interaction. It's hard on us. And so you could only imagine how it is for them. And, uh, and to not right away go, you know, play those video games or get on their phone because our, our brains need to remove ourselves from that. Now, um, one of the things that the popular apps out there, uh, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, and game consoles. So we're noticing a lot of bullying showing up on those game consoles, the PS5, uh, the Xbox, on Discord. Um, you, I love it when I have, um, you know, those 4.0 kids and you know in some of these schools and and they're like no my kid's fine they're a 4.0 student but once they get online and they're gaming and they're screaming and they're on discord they turn into a whole new creature okay uh, um i've raised three boys and of those three boys i could tell you about the anger management issues they've had with playing video games um and so this is something we have to discuss with our children and if you that you feel they are being cyber bullied online um with any of these um, pr uh, platforms, every single one of them has a report button, okay? And so they, you can report the bullying behavior online to Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, and Xbox. Um, other things too as well, it doesn't matter when the bullying happens too as well. There's something out there called Seth's Law that if the bullying occurs, even if it's outside of school hours, like say it happens next week during break, um, and you guys decide to go to Hawaii or whatever, um, it doesn't matter um, as long as they're a student enrolled in that school. If they cyber bully someone, they can actually face discipline by the school. So it doesn't matter where the bullying occurs or when. As long as they're enrolled in their school, they can be disciplined if they do cyber bully online. Okay. <laughs> ah, here's my computer. Um, so other apps and all these apps, um, these, these handouts are available. I will give you the link um, at the end of the presentation with all these Snapchats or all the, I'm sorry, all these um, uh, apps that we have out there. Uh, they are handouts. Um, I am also part of the Silicon Valley Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Basically, everybody who does that presentation, we attend trainings with them. We touch base with them, with them um, you know, to find out what's the newest thing, what's happening, so that we can actually pass on the information to you. Uh, one of the things that, that just recently happened was, I don't know if you guys heard about the Stanford doctor. That was interesting. Um, so, you know, we, we, it, it was a tip through Silicon Valley, Internet Crimes Against Children, and then it was sent to Redwood City. So basically, it, it goes through either the FBI or it comes to us and then it gets sent to the proper uh, law enforcement agency. So all of these are up there. Some of these are YouTube kids. Um, Yubu, Yubu is actually a dating app for, for teens. Um, and then we have ghost apps too that um, I'm also going to show you as well. Um, but all of these are available if you want to look more deeply into it, as well as we also do provide training, uh, in-depth training for, um, it's on Zoom, unfortunately. Um, through our Silicon Valley Internet Crimes Against Children on how to manually uh, set up safety precautions as well as uh, become more uh, knowledgeable on some of these apps. So if you guys, uh, or if you are interested, I can give you that information as well too. 
So I don't, I don't know if you've heard of it, Ms. Hammond. Uh, we, we, we provide that for, for the school. Before we used to go to school, to school, to school and hand out the iPads to teach the parents how to do it. Uh, but now due to, uh, to COVID, we are actually doing it uh, via Zoom, okay? It's a vigilant parent. It's called the vigilant parent. Ms. Garcia, I, can you take a moment to um, explain what a ghost app is for oh, parents yeah, who don't know? Yeah, Thanks. this is my next slide. Okay, so these are also called vault apps. So they're applications uh, to conceal videos. Um, they usually require a code and they look fairly innocent. So when, I, when we talk to parents, we also tell parents, open up every single app um to your child's phone or tablet or computer open up there if it requires a passcode obviously they're hiding or hopefully they're not but they're hiding something photos videos or uh instant messaging so they look fairly as you can see right here they look fairly innocent but once you tap on it it's going to require a code okay or a passcode or a key okay so these are the 11 most popular right now, but um, even a Snapchat has a hidden mode too. So when we talk about Snapchat, Snapchat has a hidden little uh, direct messaging where you click on there and there's a whole new vault there too, or ghost app where it's just a place where they hide information they'll want their parents to see or whoever takes care of them. Did I answer that? Is, is there more questions? It kind of don't look at the and chat. just so everybody knows we can use the chat to either send a um, private message to Miss Garcia or you can send a message to everyone if you have a question on a topic that is being brought up um, or questions beyond what's on the slide um, so go ahead and feel free to use the chat thank you okay and I'm just typing in um, also to the our Silicon Valley. So it's called Vigilant Parent. And that this actually teaches you how to, um, it gives you more knowledge in regards to all these apps and these vault apps or and or ghost apps. Now the virtual meetings where, where all the children pretty much know, um, you know, this is what, or you should know by now as a parent, which uh, platform they're using. Um, but we like to actually go a little bit further and, and tell the parents, um, to when they are not in the meeting, a lot of times I'll walk into my son's uh, room with his desk and his iPad's right there, wide open, and the blue tape is just hanging down. And the reason why we, we recommend um, putting blue tape over cameras is because sometimes individuals can hack into those webcams and virtually you know, turn on those webcams and take pictures or videos of your child. So we recommend that your child either turn, you know, put it, you know, face down and or put blue painters tape over over their tablets or their laptops. Um, know which pro virtual program they're using. And of course, your username. I have my sons right here, right next to my desk, my youngest son, not my oldest son, but my youngest son. Um, also to be aware of your surroundings. A lot of times what happens is we'll go into to, um, to some classrooms and I've had individuals in certain, uh, in the Zoom meetings, I'll have uh, teenagers um, lounging on the bed, thinking they're doing, you know, adjust fans or they're, they're, they, they're just laying there seductively, teenagers. And we're like, okay, this is a Zoom class. And then of course the teachers are, or the principal is right away emailing the parent. Um, we've had individuals undress <laughs> during a Zoom meeting, okay? Um, so just remind your kids that they are bringing the whole, uh, they're bringing the whole school into their, 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 their home or into their bed, their bedroom. So remind them to be aware of their surroundings be, and remind them that the meetings may be recorded. Um, and also to set boundaries uh, for conversations outside of the virtual meetings. We've had individuals actually file uh, reports in regards to harassment after the meeting because individuals are contacting them after the Zoom meeting or after the Microsoft Teams meeting. So, you know, set those boundaries, say, hey, you know, talk to your kids saying, hey, the only, the only time you should be using this is when you're in class. And, you know, set the, who are they allowed to speak with to as well. Um, I think I pretty much, um, remind children the environment, um, changing or removing a closure to occur during break and make sure that the camera's off. 
Um, virtual classroom should be at a table or a desk or sometimes those uh, TV dinner trays. I love those. I have like six of them just around the house. Uh, some are used for TV and some are used for laptops to, you know, to move around. Um, and other electronics should be put uh, away. And the, they're, what they're saying, um, uh, the American Psychiatric Association is saying is that they, if they have other electronics around, they're gonna tend to play with those electronics and not pay attention to class. Um, taking pictures, oh, also too, taking pictures or recording should be prohibited. Now, the reason why we're, we're seeing this is because um, we, we had a case where one of, the schools they they were the students were recording on their phone the zoom uh, classrooms and then they were bullying the other individuals after class and this was actually a teacher so remind the children that you cannot record um and um or take pictures of other individuals while in the zoom class um chat should pertain to school topic zoom etiquette is very, I, I, and I, I think Ms. Hammond can actually agree when we comes to this. I, she, we were in some of these classes. There's a lot of sarcasm. We have to remind kids that the, the chat, it should be pertain to school. It should pertain to questions. Sometimes children will go off topic or they will you know, start to make fun of other individuals and the, or we'll see sarcasm showing up um, in, in some of these chats. You know, talk to them, you know, talk to them about the chats. What do you guys say in the chat? And, you know, tell, you know, talk to them about it should be a safe environment, not an area where you need to pass judgment or be mean to others. Uh, questions, questions, because I know I'm going really, really fast. Do we have Ms. Garcia, can I um, just chime in? So parents that are in the room, just so you know, um, your student has actually received this training from Ms. Garcia through their PE classes about a month ago. Um, and so now is the time to kind of gauge the audience and shift the presentation more towards the parent audience. Um, so they got a student appropriate uh, version of what you're learning tonight. Um, so now we're just offering it to our parent community. If there are any questions, please put them in the chat for us. Okay. So another thing that we have noticed in regards to uh, digital safety, and this is one of the things that we've added, we did not discuss this with the children because we did not want to open up a can of worms. Uh, but we are noticing that children are online. Um, this is I was shocked at some of the things that I was hearing. Currently, the kids are using, because they're using so much social media right now, um, they are ordering drugs online. So this is one of the topics um, that, you know, it, it broke my heart because in Santa Clara County alone, and I could share this, uh, I just we just received this information in this data. In 2020, we've had 68 Oh, uh, deaths due to overdose of fentanyl with a lot of them being ordered online okay and when I when I heard that I was like oh my gosh you know the, okay I understand they're ordering it online but a lot of it they're ordering it via snapchat via instagram um, before we were it was just the vape cigarettes we were, we were seeing okay yeah some of these kids are ordering vape cigarettes online but now we're seeing more and more that the children are actually purchasing um, fentanyl and they think they're purchasing, purchasing Xanax or they're purchasing Adderall or they're purchasing you know, other types of drugs but not realizing the dangerousness of, of fentanyl. And, and this is a short video that I am going to show. And this, this actually showed on today, the Today Show, I, I wanna say Monday. A big warning for all parents from TV host and relationship therapist, Dr. Laura Berman saying, her 16-year-old son tragically and suddenly passed away after overdosing on drugs he bought off the app Snapchat. Kaylee Hartong joins us with more on this story. Good morning, Kaylee. Hey, good morning, Amy. Sammy was a top student. He had big dreams, and he had his sights set on going to NYU. Dr. Berman says she thought her son used Snapchat like kids do to send silly photos back and forth with his friends. She never imagined that he could use the app to find a drug dealer. 
a teenage boy with too much energy and stuck at home, isolated and bored, thought he'd experiment with something and, and had no idea it would kill him. This morning, Dr. Laura Berman is grappling with the death of her 16 year old son, Samuel after an apparent drug overdose. He was playing video games with his friends. You know, he was totally fine. And then an hour later, he was, you know, unconscious on the floor and not breathing. The relationship therapist seen on the Oprah Winfrey Connect Network, Network is still waiting on the toxicology the report, but she believes on. Xanax laced with fentanyl killed her son. Dr. Berman saying her son bought the drugs from a dealer he met on Snapchat. After his death Sunday, she says one of her son's friends shared the dealer's profile with her. This guy also had on his ad with a beautiful, colorful, kid-friendly list of all the things he offered. What was your understanding of how your son was using social media? You know, he would Snapchat his friends. And I had no idea that, you know, there were dealers on there. The Santa Monica police telling ABC News a preliminary investigation leads us to believe prescription drug use may have been involved, but not commenting on the role social media allegedly played. The danger online is pervasive. One study finding one in four young people report seeing illicit drugs advertised for sale on social media. In a statement to ABC News, Snapchat saying, we are committed to working together with law enforcement in this case and in all instances where Snapchat is used for illegal purposes. We have zero tolerance for using Snapchat to buy or sell illegal drugs. There are clear signs outside of social media use that can indicate whether or not someone is hopeless or helpless or is experiencing an increase in a desire to use substances. And it looks a lot like isolation and it looks a lot like anger and anxiety and withdrawing uh, behaviors, doing worse in school. Looking back, were there any warning signs that you feel like you missed? No. I mean, this was a kid that was like almost a straight A student. What does justice look like for you now? Justice is just saving one more life. And the more we can, the better. Even if it just wakes one child up to not take this risk and to understand what's at stake. Snapchat says they're constantly improving the app's technological capabilities to detect drug-related activity so that they can intervene proactively. And they say if you witness illegal behavior on Snapchat, use the app's tools to report it. Amy? Yeah, this is a... Okay, so, you know, very heartening. I mean, this just showed up on Monday. It was a doctor, um, Dr. Berman. I mean, I know some of you may have, have heard of her, She, you know, but... I always hear not my child, not my child. I've seen the smartest kids make the wrong mistakes or make a mistake. Um, you know, just the, the kids make a mistake. I mean, because the frontal cortex, because they're they're growing, they're going to make those mistakes. Um, I, I, I did have a question. Is it okay for teens to ask for privacy while attending class on Zoom? Their excuses are cameras on and they find it um, okay. Um, embarrassing for their parent. Okay, that um, for teens, if it's attending class, um, I don't know, Ms. Hammond, do, wh what are the stipulations in regards to our parents allowed? Or shall I say, I, I know what I would say, um, but are parents allowed to, uh, you know, see what they're doing in class? Can you can you read the question again? I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Is it okay for teens to ask for privacy while attending class on Zoom? Their excuse is that the camera's on and they find it embarrassing for parents to come into the class. Um, so I would say, you know, um, parents, you are in fact the parent. So any supervision of your own child um, and making sure that they're on task and in the right place and doing um, checks to make sure that that's taking place that is completely your prerogative and within your parental rights. Um, they are at the age where they get embarrassed of their, their parents, that's, that's for sure, but maybe just uh, finding a compromise where you know their camera points and where you interact with them might solve and bridge that gap so that you can still make sure that they are signing on to their classes and attending as they should. Thank you, Ms. Hammond. Now, um, so very good question. Um, I, it, it is within your parental rights um, in regards to, especially if the device is yours. Um, if the device is yours, the, all devices belong to you. When you sign up for iCloud, when you sign up for iPhone, when you, you set up your, your Mac account or PC account, 
you are held liable, the adult, because the child is actually a minor. Okay, the child's a minor. They cannot agree to anything um, until they turn 18. So legally, the phones, the tablets, the Wi-Fi belongs to the parent, okay? Uh, remember that you signed the contract. And if we read all those contracts, uh, for example, uh, the Xfinity one was maybe like five pages long, um, but my uh, Sprint one was 17 pages long. I read through all 17 pages of my Sprint account. I know what parent does that. And the reason why was because the, I did it was because I want to educate other parents too on what your rights are when it, in regards to that. And every single cell phone company has a report uh, where you can report online. So, um, and, and not to mention uh, that it shows you what they can actually uh, break your contract for. One of them being a pornography. And I know I'm gonna talk a little bit about child pornography a little bit later, uh, but any type of threats, any type of bullying behavior, it, uh, that they deem is threatening to that child and or uh, um, a threat to life and child pornography, those, they can actually terminate your contract, okay? And there is a report, and, and Ms. Hammond, I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, but that's another avenue for bullying behavior. You can report it um, to the whatever phone company that they belong to. So I know Sprint has it and I know Verizon has that. So what you do is you go online, you, report, you just click report, you know, report uh, harassment report and, and it'll, it'll direct you, you fill out uh, paperwork on, or no, I'm sorry, you fill, fill out an online form and then it gets sent to Sprint, sent to Verizon so that they can actually decide whether it breaks the terms of the contract. So it's another outlet for uh, bullying behavior or threats uh, to life. Oh, sale of drugs. That's the other one too. Now, um, so, you know, if you can, please look over your, uh, your phone contracts, see what you can, what you can or cannot do. Now, uh, once again, those phone contracts, um, they're under your name, not your children's name. You can actually call, you know, call Verizon or Sprint and say, Hey, by the way, I forgot my pass, my passcode. Um, and they'll say, okay, Mrs. Garcia, uh, let, let us change it for you. And you can, I've done that before when my 19 year old was 16, uh, his grades went down. I just called directly the phone company. I said, hey, Sprint, you know what? I need to suspend his account. And they suspended his account. He was upset, but he had no phone. It was for two weeks. So, I mean, those are, you, we have more power than, than, than we use. Okay, so, you know, please use your power. Look at your, your phone contract, see if you can suspend. And you could even change uh, the hours of when they're on online on the phone app, as well as, of course, you know, I know H, I know Xfinity has it where you could turn off everything at, at a certain time, or you could turn off all the electronics in your area. Okay, that's connected to your to your Wi-Fi. Now, um, one of the things that I want to do talk to you guys about is what you can do as parents in regards to. Uh, you know, I, I know I, I, I showed you the one about suicide and, and the mental isolation, how it's affecting some of our kids. We need to talk to our kids about how they're feeling, their emotions, because a lot of them are feeling isolated. A lot of them are feeling sad. My nine-year-old told me the other day, when can I go play, you know, with, you know, one of his friends? And I said, well, you know what, let me talk to his mom, you know, and it's sad because I see my nine-year-old and, and he, luckily he has an older brother who's going to throw the football. He's going to play basketball with him. He keeps them entertained. But if you only have one child or, you know, a male and a few, it's, it's very difficult for these kids right now. Um, talk to your kids about mental health and addiction. It's never too early. And if there's age appropriateness for when we talk about drugs, um, you know, cough syrup being, you know, if we talk about uh, with a third grader, we're going to talk about medicines. We're not going to say, hey, here's fentanyl. No, we're not. We're going to talk about medicines. We're going to talk about caffeine. We're going to talk about healthy behavior. And then as soon as they get older, like in middle school, that's when we're going to talk about the, the vapes, the cigarettes, you know, what other drugs are out there. It's on what you believe your child is at. Uh, please be aware of changes in behavior. 
Um, if all of a sudden, once again, they're, they're angry when you take away their electronics or they're angry all the time, uh, there's something behind that anger. So, you know, we're going to have to dig a little bit deeper. Um, look out for excessive packages. My 19 year old, I still, I'm still like, what did you get? Oh, let me see. Oh, you know, I'm always questioning what he purchased it, because I don't put it past any, any child. And my, my son's a sophomore in college. Uh, unfortunately, he, you know, he's here still uh, because of, of COVID. But when I see those packages, I'm like, I'm right away because I know what's, I, I know what kids are capable of. Um, check social media for private messages. Once again, look into those apps, open every single app in their phones and their laptops and their computers. And then of course we have resources, resources, resources. So one of the resources we have uh, that we always give off a giveaway is Uplift. We have Uplift. Um, all of this information I think is being recorded. Am I correct, uh, Ms. Hammond? Yes, this is okay. being recorded. So uh, some of the things that, you know, uplift is, you know, if for drugs and as well as mental uh, issues that you may have, Allen Rock Counseling. And then through the Santa Clara County Behavioral, uh, we do have the mental health, the substance abuse. And of course we have our local suicide hotline as well as um, our suicide crisis hotline. Now, and the national suicide hotline. But if the child and we have to start talking to our children about suicide. Um, it, it's, it's really sad. Talk to them that if they hear of a friend, because a lot of times what happens is we will hear uh, that the child knew about it, knew about the suicide, but we don't hear about it until after it occurs. So um, talk to your kids about what if your friend is thinking about um, of course, you know, it has to be, you know, age appropriate, but uh, for example, already, gosh, three times, I'm going to say three times my child has called, uh, called me or woke me up, you know, at two o'clock in the morning going, mom, mom, uh, so-and-so says they're going to kill themselves. Now we're not going to call the suicide prevention hotline. We're going to call 911. And so if you can, uh, you know, here, my son, I'm like, I'm telling, I, I told my son, I said, you know what, keep, keep her on the phone as long as you can. Uh, where is she at? Try to get as much information as you can. I'm calling 911 and I'm going to, they're going to do a welfare check. Um, so that is a 911 call. Now, suicide crisis hotline is more if your child is, or you know, of a child that's thinking about doing it. Um, they always say, I hate my life. I don't want to live anymore. That is going to be a suicide crisis hotline. But if they're doing it at that very moment, that's a 911 call. Uh, you can also, call, when you call 911, let them know it is a crisis. And when we have that, uh, a lot of times what they'll do is send a CIT officer. A critic, uh, what, what they do is their main purpose is to deal or talk people down from their crisis. Okay, so they're trained. Uh, most of, uh, actually, all of San Jose PD is trained. We also do have a special unit, uh, mobile crisis. I, you may have heard it in the news too as well, that will come out and um, with, the, with uh, social workers. And it's actually uh, headed by a psychologist that is actually a police officer as well. So he, talk about overachiever, police officer and a psychologist. Um, so, and he, he, we, he's in charge of the mobile crisis unit that will be sent out when issues are um, there's mental health issues involved. Okay. And then of course we have the crisis hotline. This is a number we shared with your kids. We shared the crisis hotline. We, we shared the national suicide hotline. It's also, it's really nice. It's also behind their, um, ID card. So it has, uh, I think it says text. Um, it, it doesn't really matter what you text for it, It's for everyone. For example, for the San Jose police department, it is text blue to seven, four, one, seven, four, one. And for, for other kids, it's actually text home to 741741. So it, it, it varies, but this is for children. This is for adults. This is for kids. And they're certified counselors who actually text you back. And then um, we also have the Asian American Community Involvement. They do a lot of counseling services too as well. Okay, do I have any questions?
I know I talk a lot. No? Okay. And if you want to remain anonymous, there is a point uh, uh, um, in the chat where you could actually put anonymous in the chat too as well. Um, another thing we're having is social media challenges. Um, if you guys remember, and we, we, we talked to the kids too as well, right now they, they were telling us the blue whale challenge. The blue whale challenge has been around for years. Um, and it's to a point where the, the blue whale challenge is they're trying to outdo each other before they kill each other, basically. So, or kill themselves, I'm sorry. So they challenge each other, um, but there are so many out there that are, it, and if you can't, um, if, you, if, you, if you don't know what some of these challenges are, go on TikTok type, or, or Wikipedia, or just type it into, you know, into your, your Google, and you'll get all that information, the different challenges that are out there. Now, I, rem that, I remember the, the ASL uh, challenge and that was the ice bucket challenge. And so they made you know, millions and it was positive, but now then we got the Tide Pod challenge. I mean, it's kind of sad that we have to lock up the Tide <laughs> when you go to the grocery store. That is the reason why, because children were daring each other on TikTok, on Snapchat to eat Tide Pods. Um, and then also to the Kiki challenges where they were jumping out of the car as it was going and uh, to uh, a Drake song. Uh, cinnamon challenge was where they were putting cinnamon, um, see how many spoons of cinnamon they could actually step into their mouth. And the interesting, I don't know if you guys ever had too much cinnamon on anything, you're gonna choke, it's bark. You're gonna choke, choke. Uh, the marshmallow challenge, same thing. The skull breaker challenge is where, uh, and, and we, we've had cases where, where kids throughout San Jose have actually hurt themselves on the skull, um, the skull breaker challenge. Now, so I don't know if this video, I'm gonna stop in the show, see if the video shows up on here. Uh, let me see if it'll show, hold on, I think it was here. Oh, I guess not, okay, maybe here. Ah, never mind. Okay, I'll just continue to share. Um, so the skull breaker challenge is they what they try to do is they jump. They'll they'll will be two individuals on their side, and they will tell they'll they'll tell them to jump. But with, when the person the middle person is mid air, they knock their legs down so that they land on their skull. Okay. So we've, and there have been many hospitalizations due to, uh, due to that. So it's a skull breaker challenge. So, you know, a lot of kids will say, hey, you know what, let's take a, and one children will hold a camera and then three children will jump up and the middle child is actually tripped so that they hit their, their, their skull on, on the floor. So, you know, please look it up, you know, be, be aware that these challenges, uh, they're out there, they're out there. Um, so when it comes to their histories and their social media, I love this. Um, I'm probably, I could find anything online <laughs> or see where my child or anybody else has been. Uh, check histories and social media accounts, okay? Advertisements tell you where your child has been. So for example, um, if um, all of a sudden I, you know, I check, I'm checking their Snapchat, I'm checking their Instagram you notice certain advertisements are gonna be aimed at them for following some social media influencers. And so they may you may see things that are inappropriate for them on these apps. So pay attention to the advertisements too. And just like us as adults, when we're online and we're checking things online, all of a sudden we get, say we're looking for, I don't know, um, puppy dog or dog, uh, dog pillows. All of a sudden you're getting all these chewy advertisements, all these advertisements for pet care. It goes the same with their kids. And so when you're, when you're opening up all their apps or their social media, um, look at their advertisements because that tells you where your, your kids have been. Um, check on friends, um, check on friends of friends for a spam account. Um, there's always that one friend that doesn't have a private account. So what you do is when you open up uh, their account, um, you know, look at it, you know, look at it. 
um, and, and then click on various friends. And then all of a sudden you'll find that one friend that doesn't have an account. And then that's where you tend to find your child's spam account. So when you're checking on those friends, um, I, I love Snapchat because I could break into a Snapchat. So um, what you do, um, this used to work. Uh, I haven't done it in a while. Um, once my son turned 18, I, I pretty much said, okay, here's your brand new phone bill. Here's your brand new phone. It's on you now. Um, but one of the things that you can do and vigilant uh, parent actually does show you how to do this. You put if for Snapchat, you put it in airplane mode and you open up their account. And then you can, you know, you could see everything that they're, that they're doing. And then you um, actually will delete, you know, delete the app and then you get back on again or, uh, and then get back on, take it off airplane mode and reinstall it. Okay. So I know it's kind of confusing, but if YouTube, 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 how to break into a spam or how to break into Snapchat, how to bypass Snapchat passwords, tons, 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 tons. And they'll tell you how to, how to do it, um, how to get into their Snapchat, how to get into their uh, Instagram accounts and Facebook accounts. But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I hope you don't go that far. Um, if also too, a lot of the apps require your children to be 14 or older. So check the age limit uh, for if they're allowed and you could actually get them kicked off. You could get them kicked off of that social media app. Um, emails and IP address can be searched and location can be found. Um, regardless of VPN, there's some very good VPNs out there and there's some very bad VPNs out there too as well. So if, for example, this is gonna be your homework when you're done. Google your emails, see if your address shows up. If your address shows up, that means you're not safe, okay? And so there are ways too that you could, you could ask Google, please remove this, please remove that. Um, different, different, um, um, <laughs> different web servers will allow you to remove your address from that, your association with your email. So please, please, please Google your email because a lot of times what we do is we're like, oh, my son uses my email. You know, he doesn't use, he doesn't have his own email. Well, my nine-year-old doesn't have an email, but it, he uses mine. And so it comes back or it used to come back to my address, which was really scary. Okay. So really, really scary. Now it goes, uh, my address uh, or my email goes to an address in Los Angeles somewhere. So they're unable to find out where they are. So just be aware of that. And then also to maintain positive behavior, maintain that, uh, that positive online behavior uh, because kids see what we're posting to as well. Okay, question. Okay, I do have a question. Um, a question in there. Um, so they asked, can you explain again how the youth can use the 741, 741 for text option? Um, I explained that it's used for anyone in crisis um, and someone will respond to support the student in crisis. Is there something you would like to add to that? Um, I think, Ms. Hammond, what is the word that they actually text to uh, the crisis hotline? I know for us it's blue, for some schools it's home, but I think uh, it's different for every school. I think it's just, um, I want to say help. It's help. Okay, so yours is help. So what they do is they you know, some, they, they put it input the number 741-741 and then they put help, send, and then a certified counselor responds to their crisis. Okay. I, I hope I explained that. And then uh, they, they will communicate with the child um, and try to assist them in, in uh, trying to get them through the crisis. Okay. And we have an additional question. Um, what do you do if your address is found to be associated with your address? So your, okay. I think your email address is associated with your home address. A di a different web servers like Chrome allows, uh, Google lets you remove it. Um, so there are ways that you, and, and some of them may be free, some of them, uh, they will actually charge you. Um, I wish they wouldn't, but they do. But uh, some of them are free where you remove your address. So I know Google allows you to remove your home as well as your address. So look into that. 
Safari is actually pretty good when, if you report it to there too as well, uh, to allowing you to remove your address, okay? So th there are ways around it, but I will get you, uh, I, Ms. Hammond, I'll, I will give you more information in regards to that, how to remove your, your address, a more uh, concrete example. Thank you. Okay. That's a very good question, uh, but please do Google it. Please Google your address or your email address. Now, another thing that we are still having issues with are predators. Um, like we said earlier, uh, we just heard, or Redwood City just arrested um, a pediatrician on, you know, that was communicating online what he, what he thought was a young girl. Um, and, and, and it's just interesting, but they do come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, we've, we've arrested, um, you know, teachers, doctors, police officers, coaches, priests, you name it. And they're every race, Asian, uh, Hispanic, Caucasian, you name it. So the one thing that's interesting though, is um, they're starting to be younger and younger. They're not the creepy, I, I know when we were growing up, Miss Hammond, they were the creepy old Caucasian male. That's not the case anymore. Okay, so they're they're coming, you know, in all shapes and sizes. They're males. They're fe we're seeing more and more females. Before it was mainly males. Now we're seeing more females. Um, they're playing games with our children. Um, you know, be aware of that. Uh, for example, I, like I uh, I said, I have uh, three boys, and uh, the oldest being 26, the second one being 19, and you know, when the only time they play with kids is when they play with my son. And they will tell you, they will tell you, my sons will tell you, uh, I'm not going to play with a, a nine-year-old. I'm going to play with my friends. So, you know, and most of, most of the, you know, the 26-year-old, the 19-year-old, they play with people they actually know. They play, and it's kind of funny that, you know, that this is the case because they want to play with their friends. They don't want to play with random people. Um, and 26-year-olds want to play with 26-year-olds. 19-year-olds are going to play with 19-year-olds. Um, and nine-year-olds should be playing with nine or 10-year-olds. Um, so, you know, have that conversation with your kid. And, it, and if it's a cousin or, you know, some, and have them, it's best that they play with people we do know. Um, there are, they're playing video games, and whether it's Xbox, Amongst Us is, is notorious, okay? There is no report for Amongst Us. And um, I've played with my son and I'm sitting here trying to play, trying to grasp it. And there's random individuals just coming in and out. And we've had cases where, you know, people are commenting um, on those, you know, talk, trying to talk to our kids, even on that game. Um, pre uh, once again, um, they comment on our snaps, the videos, they're, they're, they're following our kids um, online. And, and sometimes they pretend they're adults some, or kids. Sometimes they, they tell the kids straight up, they are, um, they're adults. Now, this is one individual, I hope uh, this is an interesting video, and we, we showed this video to, your, to the children, um, and I show it to parents too as well. Police in South Carolina are investigating after an 11-year-old boy took his brother's car and drove alone for three hours to meet a man that he met on social media. Surveillance video captures the car pulling into a restaurant parking lot in Charleston. It was 1230 in the morning and the 11 year old was lost and probably tired. So when he saw a police cruiser in the parking lot, he stopped to ask for directions and he told the officer that he had traveled 200 miles to live with a stranger that he met on Snapchat. I, and oh, I can only imagine what this police in South kid or what this man actually promised him. I mean, I, I, 11 year old. And then we asked him, you know, how do you think he learned how to drive? Well, he video games. Um, and, and it's interesting what some of the kids, you know, told us in regards to what do you think this man said to get this kid to drive 200 miles? And a lot of them were all PS5, Xbox, Series X. You know, they were talking, oh, Rob, uh, uh, V Bucks. And, and they were, you know, and so the kids kind of know. Uh, some of the things uh, that we discuss with them is to be aware of the flags. If they start asking your name, their parents' name, their age, if they're male or female, 
those are red flags. Uh, if they're playing games, the only thing that conversations that are should be made are about the game, not about who they are. So talk about those red flags. Um, be aware of gifts, uh, money, extra phones. We've, we've seen that too. Uh, calling un unknown numbers. And once again, the isolation is the number one, rejecting family and friends. Um, be, being upset when they're not able to communicate with the, the groomer. So when you take away the electronic equipments, uh, they, they become very, very upset. Sadly, uh, one of the things that we do have issues with are human traffickers. Um, Santa Clara County is a hub. Um, there is a track, we call it a track, uh, where uh, certain individuals are moved from San Francisco, usually San Francisco, San Jose, Sacramento, Vegas, they, they're, they're usually females, the hot, the age is 11 to 18, because after 18, they're considered used goods. Um, they, they are out there, they're talking to our kids. And I'm going to show you, uh, these are just some sexual predators, and they're all young. They're all young. This was actually a 19 year old, um, Zoe Laverne, um, she was kissing, a, you know, literally straight up French kissing a 13 year old. And, it, you know, she's their influencers, they're out there. Uh, we had one individual, Austin Jones, uh, he was one individual who would got a 12 year old girl to twerk for him online. Um, and he was asking this girl for for more pictures. And, you know, I'm going to make you a social media star and or I'm going to make you a famous YouTuber. And of course, right now, most of our kids want to say, say, oh, I want to be a YouTuber, mom, when I grow up. How many of you guys have heard that? I want to be a YouTuber when I grow up. Have you guys heard that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I tend to talk. Okay, six minutes. So just please, please be aware that, you know, even the YouTubers are who, who the kids follow. Uh, and they're young, they're male, they're female. They tend to be the, between the ages of 20 and 32 which is, is really scary. So I, um, I, I'm on the FBI's website too as well. And there was a 19 year old boy and I'm trying to remember his name, uh, but they're looking for victims. And I'm like, the kid is 19 and he, he was uh, a predator for kids under the age of 18. It, it's really crazy. So, you know, please talk to your kids. This was a teacher that we arrested from Gilroy that kind of freaked me out. So. Um, I'm going to keep on moving. We're not going to have time for this video, but when we see not all of these, ha um, these are just examples. I, I want to, to uh, reiterate, these are examples, but when we see these signs or we see missing girls or missing females, um, some of these were actually ladies were kidnapped. Um, but a lot of times we'll see these examples, uh, on Facebook, on Instagram. And a lot of times it's, you know what, uh, they just walk out. They just leave. They willingly leave to meet their groomer. And because they honestly believe they're in love with the groomer, with the predator. Um, and then all of a sudden we find them later on and they're being human trafficked. Not these females. These are just examples. But um, some of you have seen them on Facebook and Instagram that, you know, that where they've just went outside to walk the dog and then they never come back or they, they went outside, they went to a friend's house. We had one case, um, it, it was actually about a month ago, two girls left with the groomer to Las Vegas and they found them in Las Vegas. It, it, it's just, it's unbelievable. So especially if you have those females, talk to them um, about human trafficking. Um, you know, talk to them about what is a healthy relationship online with other individuals, okay? Um, so be aware of, of keeping your children's, know, uh, know your children's usernames and passwords. Okay, uh, all of them. Um, mine's, I have them all right here and right here on the, on the wall. Uh, set limits on electronics. Um, listen to your convers their conversations when they're online. And remember, they're using your Wi-Fi, they're using your electricity to, to talk to these individuals. Watch out for grooming by others. Um, and then, of course, set up clear expectations and, and, and with electronics. And then once again, be aware of those ghost apps, um, the direct messaging and those monitors and monitor their apps and games. Uh, usually you need a credit card for PlayStation, for Xbox. Uh, they need a credit card to actually download any information. So technically it is 
your responsibility when it when it comes to even when they're playing video games too so you know be aware they can't log on unless they have a credit card and usually they're using mom and dad's credit card um you cannot control your children but you can control your environment um one of the things i know let's see what time is it uh Okay, I got two minutes. Uh, there's a few things, various apps of device manager for Android, family sharing, uh, family sharing Apple is really good when it comes to family sharing. Uh, there's, but there's also Bark and Net Nanny. There's tons of various apps that will monitor uh, certain words that show up on your child's phone or tablet. And once again, you're the ones that have to log on, uh, know those passwords because you're given your, your credit card to set up these accounts on PS5 and Xbox and that you don't know what they're doing so you know please log on to that see see there is parental controls for you to put on those things um another thing too as well uh this is the silicon um uh, internet valley internet crimes against children please visit this website we have all kinds of um information and resources as well as those handouts we have those handouts there too as well and then of course there are resources uh, one of the things that we did not uh, get a chance to talk about was uh, inappropriate pictures. Uh, be aware that it is against the law for a child to take na naked pictures of themselves or others if they are under the age of 18. It is considered solicitation of child pornography if a child asks for it. So if another child asks for another child for a naked picture, that's solicitation you can call the police department on that okay so that's one of the things you can do um another thing uh, as well it, here's the scary thing if they get a random picture okay a random picture from a random phone number okay uh you've got you need to report that because that is in your cloud that is in your, where in your device manager so that's somewhere and so it's going to be linked to your account so you need to report that as uh, you know if it's a random number uh you can actually notify cybertipline.org i recommend doing both uh reporting it to cyber tip line and the san jose police department if you receive naked pictures okay which is uh right there 277-8911 of course uh other resources we do recommend the commonsensemedia.org uh that is very uh it tells you what a apps are appropriate what video games are appropriate then there's netsmarts.org as well as um silicon valley internet uh, crimes against children as well as the ywca if you want more information on human trafficking and unhealthy relationships ywca has presentations too as well for you and uh handouts too as well questions because i'm right on time Questions? You could actually unmute or. You did such a good job, Ms. Garcia. There are no questions. And if you guys have, um, I know you guys are, but if you guys have any more questions or comments uh, or uh, more information, uh, two seven, there is my um, phone number and email. So if it's something I didn't cover, uh, once again, please talk talk to your children about what's appropriate, what type of pictures are appropriate, and technically by law, um, and this is why the school does not post videos or pictures of your child without consent. Technically, nobody else can post pictures of your child without your consent. So uh, if uh, for example, my friend, I always ask her, hey, can I post this picture of your child? And she'll be like, no, or yes. So they're supposed to ask permission, okay? But talk about what's appropriate, what's not appropriate in, in regards to sharing uh, and oversharing with your children. We went over it, but it, it's nice to be reiterated by the parents too as well. Well, Ms. Garcia, thank you so much. Um, parent, if you have any questions, you can always send an email to any of us. Uh, we'll also, you also see Ms. Garcia's email up there as well. Um, the this, this city is always there to support us. 
Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you for, for giving up some of your, your Thursday evening and you guys all have a great night. Thank you, everybody.